Hello everyone, Mr. Carl here, and for today's English lesson, we're learning about verbs. Now before we learn about what verbs actually are, I just want to share with you what we hope to achieve with today's lesson. So if you can have a look at the whiteboard here, by the end of today's lesson, all of us will know what a verb is and give some examples of verbs. Most of us will identify verbs in sentences and complete sentences using appropriate verbs, and some of us will create sentences using their own verbs. So that's something to keep in mind as the lesson goes on. Now, what actually is a verb? Well, I have a handy little rhyme prepared here, and I want you to maybe try to say this along with me. I'll say it for you first, and then you can join with me. So, a verb is a word. It's an action word. If you can do it, then you do it. If you do it, it's a verb. So you might try to say that along with me, and maybe try to stick it into your mind. So, a verb is a word. It's an action word. If you can do it, then you do it. If you do it, it's a verb. So, what are the things we do? Can you think of any things we do? At this point, I'll take a few examples from the class and make sure people are clear enough on what a verb is. Brilliant. Well, now we're going to go into some group work. So I have you in groups of three, and I have an A4 page, and I'm going to have one scribe per group. Your task is the following. You're going to have two minutes, and you and your group have to try to list as many verbs as you can think of. Remember, a verb is an action word. It's a doing word. So can you think of the things you do maybe on a day-to-day -day basis, maybe in school, after school, at the weekend, and you have two minutes, I'm going to set the timer now, and then we're going to hear a few examples from what you and your group came up with. So after the group work, I would take examples from the class, I would elicit responses and make sure everyone's on the same wavelength, as well as being a good opportunity for the class to learn from their peers, it would be a, a good way of me to observe the class and make initial assessments on who understands it really well, who might need a bit of extra support. After this group work then, I would go into the following. Now the next thing we're going to make sure that we're clear on is the fact that while some verbs are very active, like jumping and running and kicking and throwing, there are some things we can do where it's still a verb, it's still a doing word, but it's actually not very act active. So I'd like everyone to stand up at their desks now. Just You can push in your chair underneath your desk and I want you to just stand still. I'm going to go to the whiteboard, I'm going to write down the answers, but just standing still now. Can you think of any verbs you're doing? Because there's hundreds. And at this point again, I'll give a chance to, for the learners to think, well, I'm standing, I'm breathing, I'm hearing, I'm seeing, I'm feeling, I'm noticing, I'm thinking, I'm um, worrying, I'm um, wondering, all those different types of non-active verbs. Because it's important as well to know that it's not all action-packed verbs, they're just doing things. And it's, to, it's important to establish that difference before we go on to the next activity. After I give the learners a minute or two or five where we discuss this as a whole class and I write the examples up on the board, I kind of revise what we've done so far, that we know that a verb is a word, it's an action word, but it's not always very active. A lot of verbs, like seeing or hearing or noticing, are things you wouldn't really recognise at all, and that you can do while standing still. Once we've clarified that, I think the learners will have a really good idea of what a verb is. It's not just running and jumping, that it's, it's anything you do. And this would be very important as we go into our next activity. Now at this point, I will hand out the activity sheet. And if you give me a moment, I will have it up on the whiteboard. Now, before we look at the verb activity sheet I've prepared for you today, I want to have a look at one or two examples of the work you're going to see and do independently. So there's two types of activities here, both to do with verbs. If you can have a look here, the first example of the one you're going to work on is you're going to be given a full English sentence, and what you have to do is underline the verb in each sentence. Now let's remind ourselves from earlier on in our lesson, what is a verb? Can anyone remind me? Yeah, a verb is an action word, it's a doing word. Okay, so let's have a look at this first sentence and you might be able to help me out. So the cat in this sentence is the subject. Let's read the sentence and see what we make of it. The cat ran and jumped over the wall. So the cat is a subject, and remember a verb is a doing word, or an action word. So essentially, we're wondering, what is the cat doing in this sentence? Anyone pick out any of the verbs here? And at this point, I would let the class elicit, elicit the answer from the class. And of course, 
Uh, well, hopefully they will tell me that ran and jumped are the two verbs in that sentence. Excellent, yes. And if we were to look even further, can we tell us what tense these are in? Present tense or the past tense? Excellent, they're in the past tense. So if we were to say what the cat does every day, it would be the cat runs and jumps over the wall. Let's have a look at example two before we move on to the second activities examples. The boy sat down and thought about his day. So again, can you think of what the verbs are in this? Again, we have the boy as the subject this time. So what is the boy doing in this sentence? And again, I'm going to list his answers from the class. Uh, excellent, yes, the boy sat down and thought about his day. Now you'll notice, compared to the cat who's very active in his sentence, so he's running and jumping, the boy is quite still, yet he's still active. He's still doing things. So it's important to remember verbs are not just active. The boy is thinking, he's sitting. Okay, so that's example one, and you'll see all of question, all of the, uh, activity one is just asking you to underline the verb, so you'll find those. Now let's move on to activity two. Slightly different, but I think you'll have no issues with this. There are sentences that you need to complete with the appropriate verbs, and when I say appropriate, I mean verbs that make sense, because we could all throw in random verbs and it might make the sentence sound right. So you pick the right sounding verbs, that makes sense within the sentence to complete these sentences. So let's have a look at the first one. The girl blank to the shop because she wanted to blank a cake. And at this point, again, I would have listed answers and the brilliant thing about these sentences is there's 101 correct answers they could give me. The girl walked to the shop, trudged to the shop, um, skipped to the shop, drove to the shop. Loads of different answers there. Uh, I would have listed them and I might take one that was really high end if someone came up with a really really good word i might write that into the sentence and the good thing as well is towards the end of the sentence we have a narrower field so maybe because she wanted to bake a cake or buy a cake or eat a cake but this might give me an opportunity to um, filter out the answers that might make sense example two then look out blank Dana, as the rocks started to blank down just like the first one, I'd make sure that the children are very comfortable and there's a clear level of understanding. Again, this might be a point where I can identify the one or two that may seem a bit more confused and I would try to encourage them to give me these answers on the board as a way maybe to build their confidence and bolster their confidence before they actually begin the independent work. So, for look out, it could be screamed Anna, shouted Anna, roared Anna, um, as the rocks started to blank them. And again, First one is a very broad one that can be any word, um, any kind of vocal word. And the second word, it is a narrow, narrower focus again. So it could be that they're starting to trickle down or fall down or cascade down. And again, this will give me an opportunity to rule out the words that don't really make sense. So if it was that they started to jump down or they started you know, to run down, different words that mightn't sound right. Uh, and again, we can kind of discuss that. At this point, I would make sure everyone's comfortable with what they're doing. I'd hand out the activity sheets, which is the main body of the lesson in terms of independent work. Each learner would get their sheet. It would be very similar to this. They'd be allowed to fill it in. And as well as that, there would be a little early finisher activity at the bottom of the sheet, which you'll see uh, in the sheet I've uh, provided on the uh, document. And at that point, I'd give them five or 10, 15 minutes, whatever seems appropriate. I would circulate around the class. Uh, I've, maybe I've identified my learners that need a bit of extra support and they are the ones I'd have a bit more one-to-one -one correspondence with. After they've had their opportunity to complete it, I would correct the activity in class. Um, depending on time, I might save it for after school, but I find it can sometimes be beneficial to correct it, correct it with the class together. And again, that would give our learners opportunities to hear the words other people came up with and maybe build up their own verb vocabulary. Um, yeah, at this point then, I would introduce them to the game we're going to play. Now the game is, um, if I can actually show you quickly here on the PowerPoint. Um, so it would look like this, there's a spinning wheel that goes from A to Z, and they will have to come up with a verb beginning with the letter, and I would click the spinning wheel, it would stop at a random letter, and that's the letter they're tasked with. I find this is a nice interactive game, 
uh, the learners compete in pairs. Sometimes I might go where it's one pair that have the entire attention of the class, but oftentimes, especially on the first lesson, I feel it's best to do 1v1 across the whole room. So everyone pairs off with a partner and they just have to try to say a verb before their partner does. But there's 10 pairs saying verbs around the classroom. So everyone's getting a go and there's no one sitting down and just letting other people take it. Uh, at this point then, as I spin the wheel, I would maybe prefer to be a bit more mobile in the class. So I'll stop spinning the wheel, but instead I'll tell them I'll be calling out the next few letters and that'll give me an opportunity to um, check in with the ones that I might be a bit more um, concerned with ability wise and listen out for the types of words they're coming up with and I find this a really fun activity uh, it makes the lesson more engaging it's a nice way of assessing for me I can observe and I can assess um, quite easily and it's a good way for them to feel engaged and active in the lesson after this activity then there is just one more real activity within the lesson before we do our little reflection at the end and that is the poem. Now, again, I've shared the poem online, but I've just, I've got a copy of it here. And the poem is a poem called Verbs Like Me, if you can get a look at it there. So I'm gonna read it out for you briefly. Uh, this is a really good example of how important verbs are to us in our sentence writing and in our language. And as well, it gives another great bank of verbs for the learners to use in their own writing. So the, the, the poem goes like this. Nouns claim to run the grammar game because all of the things they name. Just think a minute, look and see. Nouns depend on verbs like me. A person could not walk or talk, play ball or climb a tree. Any place that you can name could not even be. As far as things, forget it, kid. Things just don't stand a chance. Without a verb, a bell can't ring. A bear can't dance. A bird can't sing. The sun can't shine, the moon can't glow. Trees need verbs to make them grow. Now you know why verbs expect nouns to give us some respect. And I might, you can have a look at it here and just while I talk you through what I do. So every learner would have this activity sheet in front of them. Now, as you can see, the verbs in the, in the poem itself are bolded, so they stand out. One option would be to unbold them and get the learners to underline them. And that could be a nice um, kind of higher end activity as well. But I actually quite like it the way it is. I think we could discuss the message of the poem. So what the message is essentially that verbs are saying that they're just as important as nouns and they have a lot of relevance to our sentences. And it would give us a good opportunity to pay attention to some of the verbs we can see. Uh, and there's lots of other opportunities for different activities that can kind of come off of this. So we could say, a rephrasing activity. So I could pick out different verbs and say, can you think of a verb they could have used instead? And yeah, I think this would maybe be 10 or 15 minutes where we have a proper chat, maybe get them in pairs or choral reading to practice the poem. And this is definitely something we could return to at the start of our next verb lesson. Now, once we've done our poem, we've done our independent work, we've done our activities, and then we've done a bit of group work at the start. So we've, we've really covered verbs in a lot of different ways. I would then finish, and I'll show you on the, uh, on the computer here again before I wrap up. I would then finish on a little reflection on what did we learn today. And again, as well as assessing the class myself, I think it's important for the learners to engage in a little bit of self-assessment. Now, this is exactly what we said at the start of the lesson, in that all of us and most of us and some of us will achieve these things. And at this point, I would hope that either it could be the thumbs up strategy where a thumbs up or a thumbs to the side or a thumbs down, or maybe the traffic lights, which I like to have for a class. So green means I achieved it. Yellow means I'm not 100% sure on it just yet. And red means I'm really not sure. So at this opportunity, I would read through the three objectives we had with the lesson. And I would ask the learners to show, and they don't have to look at their, the partner or look around them, but show an honest appraisal of how they think they got on. And I think, look, we want our learners to be self-reflective on their learning and we want them to be active in their learning. And if it's just a lesson they trudge through and get done till break time, it's not really great. So by doing this self-reflection, the learners are kind of taking ownership of their lesson and of their learning. And as well as that, I've got a great opportunity to observe them. So at this point then, I'd wrap up the lesson and um, that would be it essentially. So thanks for taking the time to have a look at this video. 
and if there's any other questions you have, I've sent on the PowerPoint I would use, which I think is a good kind of way to stitch together the different activities and keep me on track as well with what I'm doing. I've sent on the activity sheets I've used. Um, I'm in my sister's kitchen now, so that's why uh, it's a bit different. And mm -hmm. yeah, I hope it went well, and I hope you enjoy looking at the video. And if there's any questions or any notes, I'd look forward to hearing them. So thanks for taking the time.